we're going to implement this uh, Snowflake Guides Financial Services Asset Management Demo. So a little explanation at this website on Snowflake Labs. And you just go to the setup folder, copy and paste these four scripts into Snowflake. And we're going to do that right now. And this, this first three will build it. And the, the last one will actually run the smoke test to make sure everything works. So you see I've copied and pasted these four scripts in. Uh, I've got the first one right here. I'm going to click this All Queries button, which will allow me to click the Run button, and then it will automatically run all of these queries right here in order. So what this is going to do is create the computing and other warehouses, and you can see it's already done. So now we're going to go to Script 20, and we're going to click Run, and this is going to fail intentionally because we don't have this Zeppo US Stocks Daily share. So as you can see right here, even if we refresh, we don't have a share into a database named Zeppo US Stocks Daily. So to get that data, it's easily on the data marketplace. You click this button and then click Explore the Snowflake Data Marketplace. And all you have to do is search for Zeppo. So Zeppo is providing uh, complimentary stock market data for data science. And then you can click this Get Data button. Scroll over here, click fill in the name. It might already be there if you're in AWS West region. So Zeppo US Stocks Daily, what other roles do you want to access this database? I recommend, um, well, you have to choose FinServe AM Admin because that's the one that we're using to build. And then you click the ISF button and create database. So essentially, Zeppo's data is now shared into our account and they could do that for any, any um, providers uh, throughout the world because that's because they, um, they promised to keep this data uh, throughout the Snowflake region. So we're just going to click a run again. By the way, all of these scripts are item potent, meaning that they can be rerun again and again uh, with no problem. It will, it will be smart enough to rebuild on their own. So now this is what this is doing is just, uh, as you can see, we already have this Zeppo data. That's, that's this new database that was just created right now. And so it is now coming in with the stock history. This is the tables that we're building. And now we can start querying this data. As you can see, these two scripts are now run. So we're going to click this script 30. We're going to click Run All Queries. Now this one's going to take a little longer. This one's going to take about four minutes. And let me explain why. Um, first, as you can see, we don't have any compute. And it's going to size up to a two extra large. As you can see, it just did that. So per second compute, sizing up to a two extra large to get the job done. And this is a very uh, complex job. Uh, let's see if we can refresh right here. As you can see, we've created about 999 traders. It's going to then create 2.2 billion synthetic traders, uh, combining some of the stock market data and create um, synthetic trades. And we're going to also be able to calculate using a materialized view on a window. I'm sorry, not a, it's not even a materialized view. It's just a window function on a regular view to calculate um, cash use uh, and your position at any time and your PL at, at any time. So um, this is this is this is code that's ready to use and it's and it's on GitHub. Um, so feel free for you to start using it to, to test or build your own systems over here. So we could talk a little bit about um, what's going on in the script and there's a deeper dive demo um, if, if if you choose to see that as well. So Here's the uh, the trader table that that was just created with 999 records. So you can see that even uses some other um, marketplace data. That's the Snowflake sample data right here. So all accounts should have this Snowflake sample data uh, that is coming in through the shares right here. Um, as you can see, this Snowflake sample data um, is, is, is shared with me right here. And also that's the Zeppel US Stocks Daily that, that we created. So as you can see, we're using two different shares data and we're using the source example data to create the synthetic trader names. And then from there, we create a watch list. Um, this is if you wanted to add some various um, stocks that you were considering buying. And then this is the, the thing that's taking the most time right now. It's creating this trade table. As you can see, it's creating um, synthetic trades using some random, some, uh, random functions. Oh, sorry, no random functions in this one. But it's essentially just join the data and then creating the synthetic trades based on date. And this is the important thing here. This is the uh, 
the when when you secret sources when you're building this data, when you're creating any table essentially for free, you want to sort it by trader symbol and date. So anything that we query on trader symbol and or, or, or date uh, will be very fast because it's going to use Snowflake's micro partitions to prune out the data that it doesn't need. Okay. And you see that's taken about two, two, two plus minutes to build all this. You could always click this query ID button to dive into uh, this um, and, and see what's actually going on um, behind the scenes. Of course, Snowflake uh, fully supports um, you know, ANSI SQL and even has some, some transactions here. So we're just going to create this trader right here. And this is where, this is where the position um, views are created. So in other systems that I've worked on, um, this would have to be a lot more complex and would have to be persisted as a mater as materialized view or, or regular tables. But here it's just a, a regular view, as you can see, and it's creating um, some window functions and bother proceeding to create the number of shares cumulative, number of cash used. So you can actually use this as the basis for a PL system. And we, over here it's creating uh, the number of shares, current positions, as you can see the comments over there, that's good for a data dictionary. Um, and we place that in middleware schema. We could have put both of these into this one position now, but it seems easier to just break the logic into two different views, just to make it easier to understand. All right, so that is about to wind down and it's about to auto suspend. As you can see, we auto suspend the, the warehouse and now that big query is complete. All right, so what have we just done? We've just, um, we just built the, the first four scripts on, the first three scripts. So I'm just going to run this one. This one's going to be very fast. This is actually the smoke test, the demo walkthrough that we have. And feel free, there's another video where we actually go through it. But feel free to run through it. There's comments on everything. I just want for the scope of this one is to explain how to build this demo very quickly. I think it just took about, you know, five to six minutes end to end. Thank you very much.